Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. Santos and Marcus here for episode 10. Uh, just got back from a nice vacation. Went down south for the weather. Nice little getaway, very last minute. So we had a nice fill-in. I hope you guys have seen that episode. Chris, Sully, and our man Ethan. E-Money, as I call, I call him. Do you? Uh, I've never heard anyone call him that. E-Money. The very first disc I died for him was the big letter E with a dollar sign. Oh, okay. That man's money. Um... He grew up with my son through school forever. He's been yeah. around the family forever. And if you need something, you can absolutely count on Ethan. He's money. He's go-to. So you can call me money. money. That's how it started. So uh, I'm the one that started it, and it's really just me and, like, one other person will <laughs> eat money. Like, maybe my son or one of the other ones, but that's what he'll always be. So appreciate those guys uh, stepping in. If you haven't seen it, go back, watch it, and then come back to this one. So it was uh, a fun episode. It was a fun one. Yeah, you I, missed out. Yeah. Actually, I started listening to it on the way here. It's a oh. long ride. Uh, and it was just talking about uh, Vegas for the first part. So that's all I got was yeah. everybody's take on Vegas and how much he advanced Ethan yeah. and Chris and everybody else with Dan's uh, uh, clinic. Yeah, the, the big takeaway was go, go get a lesson with Dan Brooks-Wells. Yeah. He's a great teacher. Um, and I will always, every time we mention it, we'll have a link up here or down below, the, or down below comments. So there'll always be something there. Especially since he's ramping up his uh, game with the scheduling and you can do the private lessons and such. So. Yep. Um, we're going to go back to a format we attempted once or twice before. Uh, we used to be two weeks in advance or behind yeah, or whatever it was. We're... So now we're one week and what we were attempting to do is get close enough that we can talk about the week in review and uh, the week upcoming, week ahead. So that's what we're going to address today. You ready for that? Yeah, let's do it. Things that happened this week. Uh, I got a haircut. Mark has got a haircut. Pretty sure he lost a bet. Uh, what color is he dyeing it? Asking the audience. Pick a color. Well, he's always wanted to do it red. Yeah. I, I've always wanted to do purple. Really? You yeah. purple on you? Purple, yeah. Really? Yeah, like a dark purple, not a neon purple, but a dark okay. purple. Like, I said it one time to Christina, and then, like, you know how it's when you're looking for a new car, and you start to see that car everywhere? Yeah. I forget the name of that effect. Um, I said purple, and then, like, that day, we saw three females with purple mm -hmm. hair in that day of shopping out and about. She was like, you got to do it now. And I chickened out. I mean, I would. I would I'm absolutely do it. At least there's a temporary one that you can get in and out, yeah. whatever. Just, maybe a special one just for tourneys. Maybe just for tournaments? Just those... for tournaments. Match the hair with the jerseys that I wear. Yeah, okay. That would be a cool thing. Actually, I'm TDing them. But I'll play a couple more. Speaking of tournaments, we have the... First annual, for, we, we First hopefully annual, to make hopefully it annual. Up. I mean, if I live hopefully. here still, we'll see. You don't have to live here to make the trip. It's a 10-hour trip between here yeah. and down south. That's far we're to host looking, the tournament, so. but. It's far. Uh, we still have our people here. We'll still have a yeah. presence here. We'll have people. So April Fool's, April 1st. Pity, I, I pity the fool. And we're definitely going to put that fool. logo up here. Yeah. <laughs> a nice big shot of that. Uh, I pity the fool doubles tourney. Yeah, uh, we made the announcement. It's coming April first. How are we playing this? We're playing the first round is gonna be worst shot doubles. Yeah, buddy. So the other team you're playing with on your card picks your lie for every shot, and then the second round is gonna be best shot doubles. We didn't want to make it too too right. challenging. Right. But uh, worst shot doubles, I've never played it. Never seen or played a tournament that used worst shot doubles. I have seen Paul do it with Missy. Um, yes, that video came out very recently. Very recently. Okay. So since I started, the very first time I played doubles, it was best shot, and they said uh, MA3. There wasn't an MA3, and I was like, why don't you have MA3? I was new. I didn't know. They are like, well, basically, if you put two MA3 players together, you're going to get an MA2 player. So it was only MA2 and above. But I always said, does anybody ever play worse shot? Because it would just, you know, when you hit first available and your partner's parked, it would absolutely suck to have to take the first available. And then I saw it happen with Paul, and they had to take the OB shots. That was cool, but... We had the idea before that that we were going to actually make this happen. So Joseph Davis, the Dizzle, April 1st, come on out. Join us for some fun. It's going to be the typical D2DG approach. We're going to have a lot of giveaways, a lot of prizes. Um, we're, we're going to have that fun atmosphere, especially when you have worse shot to start the round off. Yeah. And, uh, again, we hope to have that annually and uh, as close as possible to April Fool's. But yep. That's, yeah, that's this year goal. just happened to fall right on April 1st. Yeah, uh, Saturday. Was a Saturday. Yeah. So we could do it right away. Right. And uh, what else happened this week? We had uh, the Zone OS. Let's just talk about that real quick. Yeah, the Zone OS came out, which I don't understand still. I am 
an absolute zone lover from the time Justin took the harp out of my hand, put a zone in, I'll never change. I, I, I don't expect to have your issue of being sponsored and having to weigh those. Like Throw the Houdini. New, it's, PDG approved. It's not, a, it's not a, a dream of mine to be sponsored or goals, but I like it. I like the idea, not for me, because the zone is perfect for me. But I've seen people throw the zone, their flippy zone or whatever, and it's, it's you know, it, it, this is a, a good version to make it more stable for those hard those hard throwers that can let it rip on those windy days. I think it's like I guess okay. on like the windiest of days on tour in Kansas, like at at DDO or okay. something. But like there are the a Z zone out of the box is pretty damn overstable. So, let me ask you this. Would you call the regular zone the Z zone? I love and I'll never change from the Crystal Flex, the Crystal Flex or Crystal Flex Sparkle zone. Okay? Yeah. Would you call that a utility disc? That the Z or the crystal, the, the zone period. Would you call it I a mean, utility it's, disc? It's yeah, it's a utility disc. Anything that overstable, I think, is a utility disc or an approach disc. It doesn't it shouldn't? It technically, it's a putter. It's a four speed. It's a putter. Technically, but I think we should start reclassifying a lot of four speeds as approach discs rather than. Well, it, it says putt approach. It says putt and approach. Right? So does my wizard. So I was going to go along the lines of the zone OS would be the utility disc of, like, the tilt of approach disc. Yeah, I don't, th I don't think it can possibly be that overstable. It's not going to be, like, a Baobab, like the AGL disc's Baobab, or okay. a Stego, or something like that. Like, that's when you think of more overstable than a zone, you just grab a Stego or something. So, we have, I think I have a Stego, and I know Matt throws, Matt throws a Stego. some Stegos. So, when I get my hands on a Zone OS, we'll get the Stego and... We'll do a comparison from the amateur view instead of watching these pros just crank it and make it look easy. But I like the idea of it. I just figured it was utility. I'd get my hands on one. It's definitely not going to be something I would bag, even if it was utility. My zones no, are perfect like for yours? what I need. Yeah. Little, little I straighter. just cycled mine out. Um, that beautifully dyed one that I have. We'll Free see. plug. It's a really nice one. Yeah, it's I cool. had to finally put it away. Um, it's beat in. I know Well, Jeff has like three zones. Yeah. I, only I used keep to bag one, two. I only keep one. It's beat in, and it's just not coming back fast enough. So I took that out, and I put a new uh, black uh, ledgestone uh, yeah. one in there. Those are really nice, but you never know. Um, yeah, I mean, prior to this year, I had been throwing the same zone for three years. The 2020, the first year of, of Discraft Tour Series discs. The okay. Z-Swirl ones. The Brian Earhart Z-Swirl Tour bear Series hearts. zones. I yeah, that. they were not Bearheart, though. No. They were just they they just set a bar stamp with their name. Okay. Was what they were. Okay. They were cool. They were I got one at Ledgestone, never put it away. But now I mean you say like Jeff bags three zones, like I'm gonna bag two Houdinis, which okay. is the new gateway overstable putt and approach. It's you know Have you got your hands on that yet? I have one in my base plastic one. Okay. Like a nice grippy gummy one that it'll hit and sit. Mm -hmm. And then I've got three premium plastic ones in the mail. Nice. So we'll be able to use those cool. when we head out to Hawks. Yes. And have some I fun with can't those. wait to use those. I'm yeah. so excited for my Houdinis. Um, by the time this is out, Hawks Landing will be open. Uh, they're opening on next. I don't know when. I think it's by the time this comes out. The 13th, the 12th. Today's the 6th. That's the 13th, the 12th. So the 11th. Hawks is going to be opening very soon. That's all that matters. We love Hawks Landing, we love Doug and Mary, and we absolutely love playing Hawks when the trees aren't fully grown in yet. And we'll they're, pretty, they're pretty well-defined fairways. Yeah, but I have so many trees for me. That's three guys. Well, he looks that up. Uh, let's finish on what happened this week. Opening day, Sunday, March 12th. So it'll be open when this yeah, podcast so next week, comes yeah. out. Next week. Uh, we won't be there that fast. I think I got I some things be. going on we'll this see. weekend. But, um Video wise, we won't be making that yet, or, or you never know. I go, I go with Reed. Yeah. You never know. Uh, Reed, our street team, our street team, street team our member. one and only street team member, Reed Sawyer. Reed Sawyer, shout out to Reed. Um, he he's so sneaky in the cut. He might not even be watching this. I don't know. He probably doesn't watch this. <laughs> he doesn't do much on the social. He doesn't do much of that. So, let's talk about the big happenings that just happened yesterday. Gannon Burr. He won. He won the memorial. The memorial. The McMorial. 
Uh, is it the McMorial now? I mean, Paul won like five years in a row. He did? I think it'll always be the McMorial. But now that he doesn't even play he didn't it? didn't even go. Right? Um, well, let's take, let's take, let's talk about that. Both parts. One, Gannon. Everybody knows what's happening in his world. Uh, do you think it affects Clearly his standing? Not. Like they're saying, hey, you're using our product and you're winning. Like he, he made a pretty decent showing at LVC. I think it was his worst finish, but he was still up there. And he looked good at All-Star. He looked good at All-Star. All-Star, he did, I saw the interview. He didn't have all of his discs because no, he, he only had five discs. on a mixed bag. Yeah. And then his mom like flew back out. The yeah, meeting. they had to fly out and get his discs yeah, for Vegas. I saw that Vegas. interview. So, but he still had a good showing with those. So part of his, I know everybody's talked about this. We're not going to break it down because so many people have. But yeah. part of you his argument was. You can find great YouTube videos about. Yeah. Part of the argument was the plastic bean, which is like just known across the entire yeah, disc everybody world. knows Prodigy makes really inconsistent, bad plastic. I say inconsistent. You can say bad. It's terrible. But the man just won the memorial with it, so how is it terrible? Because he has all the old stuff. He has all the first runs and proto runs. Does he? Yeah. If you go in to watch any in the bag with a I didn't Prodigy see the sponsored player, chalk coming off the disc like those. Yeah. You know all what I mean? the old, all the original. Like Kevin Jones throws X ones. You can't get those anymore. The original, okay. like the proto D twos. Kevin Jones LVC Prodigy Plastic. He was. Yeah. On 17, was it? Or 18? 18, yeah, but in the go, water. Just go watch his in the bag. You'll see it. They're all like these first runs and proto runs of these discs. They cannot reproduce them anymore. Okay. And they can't ever fix the X1. They can't ever reproduce the X1. I'm trying to give Prodigy the benefit of the doubt. I know personally they just it's inconsistent and it's just not that good. But I know also Spencer, our team member, he wins. And yeah, this is just all good. So imagine if we had Spencer with some discraft yeah, or some discs. MVP. Well, we, we tried, and he didn't want to. Because he's winning with what he's got. Yeah. All right. So we don't want to beat a dead horse with Gannon, but I just think it affects some of his lawsuit when he's saying you have inconsistent discs. And I know he has other parts to it that, you know, have good standing, yeah. and he probably will win, and he'll be a free man. But um, I think it hurt a little bit when he won with the plastic that he has. I mean, I he's, a, he's, a, he's a talented player. And yeah, right? he's just good. And... Uh, the age-old argument of Archer or Arrow. I think Simon yeah. got pretty quickly Simon figured him acclimated out MVP. Real quick, yeah. Knowing, but he's had the last, what was he, 10 years with? 10 years with this mania. This mania, so I don't know. Um, all, right, all right, so Gannon won. Uh, kudos to Gannon. I really like that kid. Uh, we um, can talk about how he sped up his time. He used to take as long or well, longer than Nico. So then let's talk about Cupcake, Cupcake Curtis. Okay. Because Cupcake, okay. did you watch the Memorial coverage? No. Oh. I only saw the first round, but it was the third coverage. He had like three, he had like three cards yeah. that he did. Yeah. And I saw the Perry third Miller one. did a lot of coverage, yes. which is awesome. But uh, no, even at, so Jacob Curtis, Cupcake Curtis, if you know him, he's been around for a long time. He used to caddy for Paul um, on the West Coast swing of the, of the tour. It was always this little, short little kid carrying Paul's bag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the blonde. He was with short. him in the European? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I do know him. But I think, I think that was him. Sorry. Um, but yeah, that's Cupcake. Now he's big, throws 560 feet, 600 feet. Wow. Um, but he was like, he was getting that Nico effect where he would just sit there and just stare at the basket. Curtis was? Yeah. Yeah. And like not putt. And like he was just like so mentally frozen. Really? That he was just in his own head and wasn't okay. able to putt. But then, then he would make the putt. Like, unlike Nico, <laughs> yeah. Cupcake yeah. wouldn't make the putt. Okay. He would always go on to, for the most part, make it. Okay, and this is, was coverage from Terry? From Terry Miller, yeah. This Terry was, Miller. And what, this what year's round Memorial, did he make Two, three, coverage? and four. Yeah? Okay. All right. So, go check that out. I know I'm going to go check it out probably tomorrow or the next day. Cause I gotta yeah, it's great coverage. Finish following it up. Um I was, like I said, I was on vacation. I was doing a lot of things, and then I was in recovery mode this past weekend. So I just kept an eye on it through socials, and I saw what happened. So uh, good win for Gannon. And Cupcake, if you're out there, work on your timing, brother. <laughs> you got to do that. He knows. Uh, and he's like, he, he commented on one of the YouTube videos. He's like, yeah? hey, I know. Yeah. Or like he posted on Facebook, like, hey, I'm, I'm working on it. It's something I know about. So yeah. he knows. Um, I, think, I think it was one of the, the skins matches where... Calvin went hard at Gannon. 
No, was that was that Nico? No, no, he went at Gannon too. Oh, I must have missed that one. I saw and the one where he went at Nico. He went at Gannon. I think I think that's when Gannon like started his turnaround. Yeah. On his time frame, which he's working on, he's doing good. Um, I know Gannon's not watching, but I'm gonna yell at Gannon too. If you have a flag that you can see, and it is so windy that that flag is pointed in one direction and not flapping around, that's at least 25 miles an hour. I think they said how it was, but... Yeah, there's wind socks for that. You don't need your chalk bag in the air 13 (laughs) times. Everyone knows which direction that wind is going in, and some of your errors are happening because you put too much stock in the wind, and what you think the disc is going to do, and when it doesn't react to that wind, there's an issue there. But this, like, it's a great idea if you don't have a flag telling you where the wind is going. But if I'm looking at the flag and it's hard left, guess which way the wind is going? Right to left. I don't have to do this 13 times. Save some time on that. I don't know. Maybe it's just his routine that Yeah, it might just be part of his routine now. On. Yeah. But, I mean, you see a lot of guys get mad when, they're, when the wind doesn't do the right thing to the disc. Oh, I, mean, I'm, I do, I'm too. I'm huge on that because I don't usually pay attention to it, right? Like, if I'm just going to walk up and throw, I'll be like, yeah. did somebody's disc do something, you know, irregular? If it got rolled or dove or something, then I pay attention like, oh, we got good wind. But usually I'm not trying to read the wind because I suck at it. I just suck. Like, I know there's a really strong tailwind, so I'll get something less stable so that it, it, you know, stables up or whatever, and it doesn't. Yeah. And it's just like, why did I even matter? I should have just thrown something stable and just let the hyzer thing happen. I don't know. Yeah, you can definitely take too much stock in the wind too easily. Like, you can also just rip a shot, and it yeah. can cut through the wind. Yeah, I think I'm easily affected by the wind out yeah. there, and especially in, in my putting, because I, I say I'm a spin putter, but I'm realizing more and more I'm closer to the spush than yeah. I am to the spin. But as soon as I feel any type of wind, I'm just like, well, don't worry about it. Just rip it in. And yeah. Again, that affects me, but yeah, wind has to be taken into account, but it shouldn't change everything to where you're overthinking it and then you go down that mental spiral because you made a miss or it cost you two strokes and it's hard to recover um but yeah the mcmorial he won five in a row something like that at least five okay but i don't know the let's talk number. about what let's talk about what happened now after lvc all the pros said see you at waco most of them said it yeah well They're skipping it's it now. because so it's a mun- municipality thing where they, the town or the parks department or whoever owns that park. Vista, not Vista, whatever park that's at, whatever park, the Fountain Hills, that mm-hmm. whoever owns Fountain Hills Park won't let them close the park to the public okay. to host an event. Okay. So that's why you see in coverage a lot of walkers, cars, bike riders, yeah. cars, like I mean, it's hard to close that kind of park. It's when a big park. You see that yeah. many. Yeah, I get that. It's a big draw. So that's why the Pro Tour won't use it as a stop anymore, is because they can't close the park and control it. Okay. So that's why a lot of, then a lot of the pros don't want to waste their time, you know, if they're... Do you think that was, like, some pro feedback to not want... Because, hey, we can't close down this park. We're not comfortable. It might have been. I, I feel like I've heard that in the past, that the pros have talked about, like, that was an issue for them. But yeah, you still get some pros. But some of the big, right? big pros Because was still there yeah. with Gannon. And yep. There were still some pros playing there. So I think that's more of a, it's my job. And yeah, some guys the more just, tournaments you're in, it helps your chances of getting some money. So yeah. sometimes you have to take that turn and do that, right? Yeah. Okay. Some people would rather just go win, play another elite, elite series. Or, you know, you, your travel time. So, like, if you want to just get to Texas for Waco, and then maybe play an A, like there was an A tier, Crush on the Concho, happened. Yeah, I did see that. Some, some people went to that instead. So then you're in Texas already, it's a little closer. So then you're next, you know, you're not driving from Arizona to Texas for an elite series. You're just driving from Texas to Texas, which I know Texas is big, but it's Take less big than, okay. it's less big than starting in Arizona. And trying to get to Texas. Okay. If you're already in Texas, you're already in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That brings up a pretty good point what you just said. I just made a note of it. Um, we'll finish talking about the week. And then actually, it just happened so we can still talk about it. Uh, I think it was Brody. Brody uh, on his Twitter, socials, whatever he did, said, 
cream will always rise to the top. That's why you need four days for a tournament, right? And I just yep. thought of that because I have not been on tour, never will be, but I just think it's not fair to some of the players to have a four-day tournament because if you're playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, God willing, you make it to Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. You've got Monday to drive wherever the hell you got to go. I mean, you're probably leaving Sunday night to get halfway there or right? driving overnight. And you're really, like, pushing yourself at that point to do it. Yeah. So then you have Monday. If you made it, you have Monday, you're, you're dead tired. Maybe you're walking the course and getting one in. You have Tuesday. Tuesday, two full rounds. Maybe Wednesday. Wednesday around. Okay. And then you're playing. And then you're in the tournament. So to so, me, it would make sense to just leave it at three days to give them a full body rental, um, re mental rest. Yeah, give them I think there's an argument for both. You know and what I mean? I think there's a good argument for both, though. I think as a as a fan and a spectator and as someone that's watching coverage, I would love to watch them play more rounds. Okay, well, that's why they're selling tickets to the practice rounds. Right. It's, it's a money thing, right? Yeah, it's a money so, thing. So, televise the practice round. It'll be practice for the camera crew, too. Right. Everybody's practicing Which, on that day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which they, everyone is now. Yeah. So, um, Latitude or Dynamic put out a practice round. West Side put out a practice round. Jomez yeah. puts out the practice round. Um, Brody I mean, and Ezra film a practice round. I could see if you're playing two courses like they did at LVC, go four days, mm -hmm. maybe, two and two to make it fair. Yeah, which those usually make sense. Yeah, well, except LVC doesn't make as much sense because it's just one big golf course. But, like, if you're somewhere where they have more wooded and then the open course, yeah. you don't want to play wooded twice or open, open twice. twice. Um, you want to make sure you're playing both the same amount of time. Yeah. You don't want to have two and one, two and one. So I could see maybe some of them being, you know, like that, like an equal. I'm not saying. That's yeah. Just, that's just a. If you have two courses, OCD it makes sense to like play you have them. So many tournaments that are three and so many that are four, but they have to be close enough. But. Yeah. That would make sense to make it a balance. And maybe it is a balance and we just don't know. I mean, some of them are three. Yeah. Some, I, I, you have the list there, but we're not going to go over them. Some of them are three. Some of them are four. I don't know if I it just, says. I feel sorry for the ones that have to drive needing rest. That's all. Like yeah. A mental day, a, a grind of a season. And for those that need to be in as many tournaments as possible to make that living, until disc golf gets to where we think it can be, um, you know, not, you know it, it's starting, right? It's starting. You got uh, Simon. You got... The money's out Paul, there. Paul, Ricky. Yeah. Even uh, Chris Dickerson. Dickerson great deal the when he went contract. there. The, yeah. the mobile home for his wife. His, well, they really took into account his, um, what is it, that he, 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 he suffers from anxiety, like a high level of anxiety, and he's spoken about it. So they took that into account, and they ran with it, man. They helped him bring his family, bring the mobile home. Like, yeah. That's a really good payday, and you know, I absolutely love him. He's just my money's on him in the woods nine times out of ten. Oh, yeah. So that's why I'd like to put him at the top. When I read Bob's book that he wrote this morning about narrating, I really thought yeah. Chris Dickerson should be in the conversation for where Worlds is this year. He's one of the it better be, yeah. woods throwers, is my opinion. All right. So because a municipality can't close the actual park. Right. And you see this the last two years, is it? Hasn't been on the tour. It hasn't been on. Maybe longer than that. Because they had the All Star game, the All Star, the, the match at the All Star, weekend. the last two. They did one of them at. The first one was at where the Memorial at is. At Memorial, yeah, at Fountain Hills. Okay, and then the last two, two. are with their current location on the golf course. We're in like Arizona or it's something. It's still in Arizona, yeah. Yeah. So they moved it. So I'm thinking two years ago is when they removed it from the stop. I guess, yeah, then so, the year before it was an All Star. Maybe my question is do you just see it just falling off? No, it'll always be an A tier. It'll be an A tier, but do you see it falling off from the pros, from the pros. The pro tour doing that? Or do you see them no, maybe moving to another area on the way to Waco? Do you see it as a prime opportunity for somebody in Texas to step one up closer to Waco? Right, and maybe try and run and their own silver series. One. Yeah, because yeah, it's not even a silver series, and there was no silver series, which might be... So I'm sure... That, I know there's a process to become an A tier. You, mm -hmm. you have to be mm -hmm. within you know, 250 miles, I think. You can't be within 250 miles of another A tier. I mean, that's minimal. You have to have a good reputation. You have to build up to an A tier. Yeah, you got to build up and get approved to have an A tier, and yeah. then let alone approved to have a silver series. Yeah. If you, but you know what? You can overcome the A tier status just by simply having added cash. Right. You can draw people just by making it a B tier yeah. with 
cash. Yeah, I've seen some B tiers that had more cash than A. They couldn't get the A yeah. designation. They just threw it in the cash yep. just as much. And that's another thing um, that I saw from the socials. The winnings yeah. have gone tremendously, Up right? Up a lot, It was like yeah. 5,500 to the winner? 5,500 to the winner, yeah. Yeah. Um, 7,500 to LVC's winner? LVC winner, yeah. Drew just posted about that. Yeah. So that's really good money. That's nice to have when you don't have a stipend. Like some of them do. I don't know. Is it a stipend? It's just an annual salary. It must be a salary. Paid I don't know. We don't. Know. We don't know what they're. Don't know the details. We don't just know any of these contracts. Some good money. Yeah. Some some McLaren money. That's what yeah. Paul has. Paul's got a McLaren. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was a week in in that uh, past. The week coming up. Is there anything happening for us coming up this week? Any, we don't have any videos. We don't have anything scheduled. You're talking the week when this comes out? Uh, yeah. The week when this video comes out will be the back nine of my round in Charlotte with Bob That's and right. Justin. That's right. So the front nine will come out. Will have come out this previous Thursday where we played Angry Beaver. And I went for the perfect... I tried to shoot the perfect round. You'll have to tune in to see if I shot the perfect round. At angry? Yeah. 18 over through 18. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You had me for a minute there. I don't even see you going four down and angry. But a perfect round. I think four downs like over a thousand. Uh, I think Justin had like a record there for a little yeah, while. He, he was like four, four down. Was I think he, he four was like or five? seven or eight? Okay. Um, yeah, we don't trust that kid. Who invited him anyways? <laughs> uh, but yeah, Charlotte Disc Golf, man. We just we can't get enough of it, especially in the winter here. It's gray. It's cold. Miserable. Yeah. Um, geez, there was a snow ice storm while I was in Savannah. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, I played. Uh, Tom Triplet, I think it's That's called. What you, yeah. Amazing park. Really fun. Uh, a lot of open shots, some trees that are fair. It's just a fun park. They have the Savannah Open or something like that there. Okay. I would recommend anybody within driving distance go play that park. Um, they have an alternate layout. They have a bunch of tees. So it's, it's really fun. Go play it. I think I shot like six or seven down, um, which is really good for me. Um, and it's all started here. At Western New York Gaming, putting league, I, the growth has been amazing. It's helping me with my casual rounds. It's helping me tremendously. It's helping me cash last few times, yeah. too. So. Yeah, I putt great on the course. I putt terrible here, but... Yeah, I think I just get in your head here. I make them all on the course. You should try two here. No, I get all in my own head. Mm. You try, I, I do the music, man. I don't like the music. Me. All right. Um, so we don't have anything coming up except for those videos. Just... Make sure you guys hit that alerts button. Yes. Hit, hit that little bell. You'll know when they drop. We're trying to stick to a schedule so you guys can kind of see Thursdays. what's happening. But you're going to get, especially when the season warms up and we're able to get out more, we have more people involved, you're going to get random drops of just some fun yeah. uh, videos that we do. Uh, comparisons, casual rounds, fun rounds with uh, dice. Um, did, we, did we? Did we have a set of the... Rift Revenger. I have one. I have Rift. You so, have Rift? Yeah. There's a new Rift, though. Yeah. I have There's the original. I, I have the original as well. Okay. And we're going to have some... We're still working on the Birdie thing. We're going to get at least four team members here. Yeah, we're going to play do, Birdie we're gonna, Disc Golf. We're going to do Birdie Disc Golf, and we're going to incorporate actual putting and see how that works. Somehow. So we're not going to really record all of that, but we'll get some highlights, a breakdown, and see if you guys want to try it. If anybody out there has ideas how to incorporate your putting basket... Or just a basket with about 50 to 60. We have 60. Actually, if you go from net to net, you probably got about 70. Because it's 40 in. Mm. So you probably got about 70 from net to yeah. net. With the opening, maybe yeah. a little more. So that's what we have indoors right now while it's cold. Guaranteed when it's warmer outside. Maybe something else. Let us know what your ideas are on how you can do some real life disc golf with a basket with the game. See what, see yeah. what we come up with. See what you come up with. Uh, and I'm going to follow that up with... An apology. I'll do it. You don't have to because you're the one with the problem. I'm going to apologize to the Jibros. You guys have spoken. And I heard you. He didn't. He's too high up there with his elitist looking down his nose at us. But Gyronauts. Gyronauts. Yeah. Astronaut, Gyronaut. That's the preferred term. They are not Gybros. It doesn't matter to you at all. He just doesn't I care. I don't care. They still can't throw 450. They still can't throw far. <laughs> I'm still going to apologize to you guys for it. Marcus the Grinch. I'll apologize. I'm sorry you suck. <laughs> what? Okay, somebody please 
Somebody with a gyro bag, please comment below. I don't care. If it's, I, I gotta find somebody. It has to be an amateur. Sorry. Clip DW. it and ship it. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Um, it might be DVW. I don't know if we can find somebody closer that has all MVP. But we're going to find somebody that has it that can take you down. That's some serious talk that you have that you're not backing up. Um, you're, you're actually, because of this sponsorship, last year you took off a few. Yeah, actually, took you took off, off most of the event. Yeah. took off most of the year. This year uh, you have a new dedication to some sanctioned, just in general. Yeah, just more tournaments. More tournaments, not necessarily sanctioned. Um, we're going to do the one for fundraising in Rochester. Yeah, we're going to do a flex start in Rochester. Yeah, I'm going to join you and Nate for that. That's not sanctioned. Um, so you are doing that. And then mm -hmm. you did the point series, which is sanctioned. Which is sanctioned. Flex but start. now um, the elitist in you says you have to play MPO well, just because you don't think there's competition there was, in MA1. Yeah, the people that would, I would usually compete with in MA1 Moved are playing MPO, MPO, which they shouldn't, but... Okay, so you don't want to ruffle any feathers in the local scene, but um, well, I I'm mean, I just you. I just say play to your rating, and no one's rated your above nine seventy. Your rating isn't. Yeah, mine's not. But right. if my so, but if you're gonna say play to your rating, actually, I can't even say that myself because I could play MA three then. Right. Yeah, I have to walk that back. All right, because I'm not I'm not gonna play MA three. Well, maybe I will. I'll play to my rating until they kick me out. I'm. I just don't. I don't play enough sanctioned events. I just don't care that much, right? To play the sanctioned events anymore. But you never know. Um, but I can't blame you because when I did the point series two years ago, I did MA two or MA one, depending who's there, who I wanted to play with, have fun. I guess it's kind of the same thing you're doing. But yep. you care a lot more about your ratings than I ever did. I do now. Yeah. Is it because it's a lefty friendly course? No. I've I've scored really well at Outwater in the past. Because it's a lefty yeah. friendly course. There's some good forehands on that course, too. Yeah. But it's a lefty course. It's, a lefty, it's, it's okay to say. The most lefty. It's one of the more lefty the, favorable yeah. courses. Okay, yeah. yeah. Than anywhere else. I just else. know that, that back Wilson. nine with the forehands I don't have. That's brutal. 11. Actually, that's a tunnel shot, but it's still keeping it tight. 11, yeah. 12, 13, 14. You cross the street to 15. So, yeah. So 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Those are all lefty, like if you're a lefty. Yeah, there's a few of them that are nice. easy lefty shots, just little chip shots. Uh, I'm not blaming you. Maybe you'll see me out there trying to learn a forehand I mean, so I can play it a couple times. Realistically, if I don't come in third, I'm not going to be happy with myself. You know you just put that on camera. That's you can't okay. undo that. I'm just telling you, if I don't come in third, I won't be happy with myself. Third? Yeah, third. Yeah, Okay. It's a reality check. He needs one. And I'm calling it here now. There's only nine people of 16. Seven more spots could fill up. But of the nine that I see here, I call Marcus coming in sixth, fifth. I'm not going to drop out names. Your mind. I'm not. I'm a realist. I'm a really good realist. And, I mean, I sponsor him for a reason. He's a good player. He's great for disc golf in general. He does the work. He does the design. But sometimes he comes back. He just has. I mean, this is you saying you could drive NASCAR all over again. That's what this is right here. I mean, I've beaten all these players in the past in Team Challenge this year, in Team Challenge in the past. Wow. You just put that on camera, man. That's. You can't. You're going to have to come back with the mea culpa of, like, I'm sorry. You're going to have to have this long apology on. Like, I don't want you to come back and say, I wasn't done. It was windy. It rained. No. I want you to come back here and say, fuck, you were right. I wasn't ready for that, and I came in fifth or sixth. That's what, if, you, I mean, if, if you podium, if you do what you said you did, I'll make it worth your while. I don't know what kind of gamble we're going to do here. I'll come up with something, but I, I don't see that happening right now, man. I love the confidence that you have. I just think you have to be more realistic about the names on there. Any given Sunday, right, you could actually win. Any given Sunday, somebody could be throwing hot and putting hot, and somebody could be off. But the names that I see, I see this one. I forgot yours is touch. Mine isn't touch. 
See, this maybe. one, this one, this one. We'll drop some names. Maybe, maybe. That one did. Maybe, yeah, maybe. yes, yes. You got a lot of maybes. You're right. You're right. I'll give you the maybes. And I, I hope I'm wrong. I truly hope I'm wrong, and I hope you get that podium. And I want you to give that big shout out to couldn't be possible without Gateway and switching to all their plastic. Yeah. Um, I mean, last time I played this point series, I came in second to most of these same players. There's one player on this list that wasn't in that field, and that's an MPO really? player. You did not come in second. At Outwater Point Series. Outwater Point Series, okay. I came in second. I was going to say, the champion of the Point Series is in there. <laughs> no, I didn't. He is. Yeah, no, I know he is. Okay. Actually, I mean, we're appointing names and saying we don't want to call anyone out. You guys know who signed up if you're watching this. Yeah, you can just look at who signed up. You can take and look at Marcus and be like, I can take him, whatever. But I'm going to give a shout out to Mike Hahn. Because he's the one that won the point series when I actually played. Like two, the first, um, the original point series. The original two years ago. Yeah. Um, I played MA1 uh, just so I can hang out with that, that core group. Actually, I initially did it because Danny, Little Gittens. Yeah. Right? He talked about doing it, and I was like, okay, he's the extra. Because it was you, Han. Yeah. It was him, Mo, and the boys. Yeah. We're doing it. So I was like, oh, I, that, I, like that whole crew, I want to do it. Yeah, I want to play with all of them. Yep. And the very first one was at Outwater. Yep. I drove straight through from Savannah. That was like a 22-hour ride. Yeah, I don't think you played with me for that one. I took a half-hour nap. Oh, yeah, you did. That's right. And I did play with you. And I beat everyone but you. Yeah, everyone but me. And it was amazing. I was like, how did I just beat everybody that I've looked up to? And then Danny Gittins didn't play another one. Nope. Sucking me into signing up for it and didn't play another one. This guy, meanwhile, was able to take one off because he had enough points. Yep. Went on a trip. So, well, you were playing from out of town, weren't no, you? No, I wasn't even living here. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You were from out of town. Yep. You weren't living here. You just came. You did it. But what matters is the point actual championship. Yeah, Han won. That was your Mike rough Han. one, right? Yeah, that one That's the one where you switched putters mid? Yeah. Yeah, that was rough. That was the one that Han won. He so, played yeah, great. I guess that's the any given Sunday thing where your points leader, you could take a, like a, yeah. a week off because you have so many points, and then when it came down to it, you were off that day. Yeah. And Mike Han was on. I played with him and his brother yeah. the first round. Yeah. Um, that was the magical day where I was able to throw fire for one yep. day, and then uh, it didn't. Nothing else worked. But I was a. I, I really hope that that works out. Um, yep. I probably will play one or two of them. I actually I like Wilson, because it's different and it has more forehand lines. Yeah. I just don't go out of my way to play it because it's such a struggle for me. But I don't know. I might sign up to do something like that if I can find somebody on a. Spencer, Twitter I'm calling you out. You didn't even play with me. What? Spencer didn't even sign up for my tea time. He did it? No. Who did he sign up with? With Alex and Sam. Uh-oh. He didn't even consider that you were a competition. I guess not. Or maybe he didn't know. It wasn't in the group chat. Yeah, it was. It was? Yeah. Ah, uh, Spencer, you better beat him. You better beat anyway, him. Anyway, we're getting way off topic now. We're getting way into the weeds. Well, that's what this is about. <laughs> it's about amateurs doing amateur stuff. Yeah. Uh, so gyro knots, point series. sorry. Uh, wow, he said it. Throw farther. Rewind, press play. Rewind, press play. Yeah. He's That's all you're going to get from me. All right. So what else you got for this week? I don't know. Is this, does this lead right into being Marcus the Grinch? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it I was going to be Marcus the Grinch, but now you're on some outlandish. I this might be myself. Marcus the Druggie. I don't know what you're on. Uh, it's, it's some good stuff. Obviously, you're driving NASCAR. You're, you're, you're practically an astronaut yourself. You might be the gyronaut. I don't know. Some high hopes come of that. I guess, does that make me the optimist? And, no, no that makes so. me the pessimist and you the optimist. I'm the optimist, you have, technically, yeah. somehow. How can you be the Grinch and be the, I don't know. the elitist? That's the, I'm, I, I like to call myself the realist. Like, it's not a glass half empty or half full. It's a glass of water. Drink the shit. Mm. <laughs> Just drink it. I don't know. Let's tell you. I mean, I tried to dumb it down and say, not dumb it down, but make it clean and say water, but we all know it's beer. <laughs> Just drink the beer. He's stuck on this now. This is going to be a good point for... When is the point series? Um, the first one? I don't even know. Mid-April? 15th. If we're on the first, it's got to be two weeks mid-April. It's April 15th. He doesn't know. He just knows he signed up to get yeah. podium finish. Okay, good luck. I hope that works. Um, unfortunately, you won't be able to, s to play through all of them. Um, no, I probably won't make all of them. This week, I've been saying this for a while, but we're going to have to commit and publish it's been 
circulated on the team and we're getting ready to announce the actual dates for the schedule. Um, but some of our schedule, unfortunately, just lands on uh, some of the point series. So I think it was like one or two. We tried to move it, but with every weekend being full, there's not yeah, much we can do. it is do. what it is. It is what it is. So we're going to have some fun at the uh, same amount that we did last year, same locations, and uh, we're going to have some fun. So Marcus the Grinch, come meet him in person. Come yeah. bring your gyro. Come beat him. <laughs> come through if your you gyro. Can. If you can. Uh, you can't. This is sanctioned. Yeah. But it's a point series. Right. So I know how we did it for MA1. How does it work for MPO? If you win or place, is there weekly cash for MPO? For Not weekly, but like for that event, do you win cash? I honestly don't know. Or is it know. all the money... Is like, yeah, did you read that for MPO? No, I didn't read anything. Because I remember MA1 had like payout on only a couple of them. But because it was amateur, I'm pretty sure it went into the players' packs. Like we got some cool swag. Yeah, there was players' packs for all of them. Yeah, so what happens for MPO? I don't know. You gotta love it. He just signs up. He's here just for the disc golf. He doesn't care. Each about qualifying the event will have a players pack for all players and trophies for the top finishers. So that mean I get a players pack in MPO? That's not usually the case. That... That's all it says. Really? MPO gets players packs? Apparently. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I don't know how to react to that because I'm not MPO, I guess. But they're used to cash. They don't need plastic. They don't need swag. No. Well, I don't know. Good luck to all the MPO players in the point series. Um, if you throw gyro only, make a note of it when you're up against Marcus when you place. Um, let us know your thoughts. Oh, yeah, I guess you're not amateurs. Well, everyone, pretty much everyone I'm playing against is an amateur, technically. What are your thoughts on... Players packs for the MPO. Um, actually, that, I mean that we can segue that into our tournaments and put the two together because I do remember a couple of MPO players saying, "Yeah, they like the cash, but depending on the items, they like the option of having some swag or something." Yeah, like some people just pack. like getting included and like, like I like tournament stamp discs. I think they're fun to collect. And then um, whatever's left, they still get their cash. Right. So like my tournament is unsanctioned, so I don't have any precedent for how I have to pay out. Right. I'm going to pay out similar to PDGA, but... But we like to front load the winners. We, we like, like to, to make it them. worth your time to win. Yeah. But like everyone's getting a player's back. Yeah. And I only have a couple divisions, so... Yeah. We don't feel like the guy in 12th place really needs that $3. Right. I think that's a waste of everyone's time. I don't time. know why it goes that far down, but sometimes it's... But there is a guy, PG, PDGA says how far you're down you have to pay. You have it's to pay to 35%. Yeah. It's up to the TD to decide... You can move some of it and front load the winners. Yes. Um, you can adjust how much you pay, yeah. but not how many people you pay. Right, right. So, yeah. Um, that's, just, that's just how we, we from, the, from the beginning, it's just how we approach it. We like to reward the winners yep. um, and give you the incentive. Sometimes during play, we would hear people saying, what do I need to, to make cash? How far down are you paying? What do you, you're playing to get a participation award. Yeah. You're not saying, what do I need to win? What I'm do I never need thinking, how far out? down are we paying? I'm thinking, right. am I winning or am yeah. I not winning? If somebody, as, as a TD at check-in, I've had people say, how many people in this division? How far down are you paying? You're already planning on not podium. Not, not winning. winning. Not winning. You're just, I don't know what to tell you at that point. Maybe you're playing in the wrong division. Maybe you should go back one if you can. Um, Maybe. This, I, I, I don't know, but. Just personally, I feel like, like sometimes happens here in putting. I walk up to you. What's second place? Yeah, I'm already mentally preparing myself for losing the championship. So yeah. I want to know how bad is it going to be if I miss. So I just realized I just did that today. Yep. So I'm not knocking people who do it. It's something that I got to work on. I should focus on how much does the winner get because that's what I yep. want. I guess yeah, that's something I'm, that we'll do. I'm never focused on how far down are we paying out. If I don't get maybe top three, I don't even want my payout. I just give it to somebody most I've days. I've seen that. 
I've actually I've actually seen him do that. He's upset with his finish, and he just says, "I don't even want it." Um, I'll give it to someone. You know, someone says their first tournament. Yeah. Or, you know, like at the Glory Be to Kids, me and Spencer came in third. We got we won Prodigy bags that neither of us were going to use ever. Yeah. So I gave them to the like the person who just missed cashing, like who yeah. just missed yeah. their like winning a bag in another division. Mm-hmm. I was Remember. like, we'll just pay this one down. Like yeah. Spencer and I aren't going to use the bags. Yeah. He he has a cart and a bag. I have a cart and a bag. Shout out to the Glory B people. One of the best. I finally made. Oh, it to Glory be so much fun. One of the best ones that's like just out there. So I I can say I've had more fun with some of our internal shit talking, a uh, casual rounds. Um, but outside of that, probably the top tournament I've been in, you're doing it for the kids. Fundraising, dollar mulligans, drinks while you're out there. If you're uh, on the right card, you have the right people the first round, you're really having Super a good time. Fun. I would tell, I mean, two courses now, right? 36? Yep, you play both. Four well. times, so 144. It's a big tournament. 144, and it does fill. It fills every it year. It does fill. So pay attention, keep an eye out. Grab your partner and be ready for that because it is a great time for probably one of the best causes. I, mean, I think it switches because uh, they did the domestic violence one or something like that. They switch every year right? what the uh, the the recipient the cause, of the, yeah, yeah, the, the fundraising cause, cause is. Um, ooh, time out. We're gonna do a little humble brag. We're gonna do a little quick talk. We're gonna segue real quick. Marcus shared on his socials today. Let them know what happened and uh, the honor bestowed upon your mom real quick. What happened? You posted about your mom. Oh, about the ride for Roswell? Yeah. We don't need to talk about that. This is a disc golf podcast, not a bike okay. riding podcast. It's, it's huge. It's huge. Uh, so Just the uh, honor. If you're, Take if 10 you're local, you know the ride for Roswell. Mm-hmm. If you're not local, it's the largest one-day cycling event in the world. Um, Roswell is top for cancer. Yeah, Roswell is one of the top cancer institutes, uh, research hospitals in the country, in the world. Um, they do an opening ceremony where someone, a uh, cancer patient, lights the torch every year to symbolize the start of the ride. Um, so this year, 2023, my mom was picked to light the torch. So they get, awesome. they're gonna highlight her and her story this year. Um, probably a little bit about me. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Very cool. So if it's talking about Marcus, talking about Marcus' mom, it's talking about disc golf because without Marcus's mom, there's no Marcus. And without Marcus, there's no podcast. Boom, that's why we're talking yeah. about it. It's pretty awesome. Um, I knew very little about it. We'll move on in a second. I knew very little about it. I never asked you for the details. I uh, just remember the very first time you're like, can't disc off ride for Roswell. I was like, respect. Second time you're like, ride for Roswell. I'm like, it really means something. And then you said, oh, well, my mom had it. And I was like, oh, that's why it really means something to you. Then this year I saw it again. I'm like, this is really awesome. So uh, really happy for your mom. Really happy for Roswell. And the whole fundraising thing just made me think of that again because it was just an awesome yeah. idea. So. Sorry, I had to do that. Uh, now, back to uh, the tournaments. You're in the tournaments. You're signing up for tournaments, fundraiser tournaments. Yep. So what we did for the April Fool's tournament, okay, the idea when we said we're going to do this, we're going to have fun, and we're going to have worse shot was because we were going to have um, dollar mulligans because we wanted to raise funds for new baskets at Joseph Davis. The problem is all the red tape of trying to get someone at the park to accept the donations to get the baskets. Jimmy, who we will eventually have on. Yeah. Uh, Carmen, uh, James Carmen. I don't know what he goes by. He goes by either. One of the main contacts. He's our New York State coordinator. Shout out to Jimmy. We were in contact with him. He was asking the parks, but... It just we didn't get the feedback in time, so we can't do the fundraiser for this one. That's something that we really focused on at JD. That's where we wanted it. Other parks were giving us problems, but like literally, there's a saying at Joseph Davis: when your putts go into the basket and come out the other side, or just get rejected straight from center pole from the stripe, you get dizzled. Yeah, it's happened so much. You'll be at another park and you'll hear somebody say, "Oh no, you got dizzled." That's how much it happens at this park. So we yeah. figure they got some new baskets on the new course. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. So we would like to figure out how we can raise funds for the old course and start slowly turning those out. So yeah. Jimmy's working on it. 
Yep. And uh, we'll come the back. Slow process around yeah. here. A we'll lot of back. bureaucracy. A lot. A lot. Well, um, but we're not going to give up on trying to get baskets there. We're just not. Yeah, I would love um, to fundraise new baskets there. It's one of the most played courses. If we get one new basket in, it's a, it's, it's a, a win. Yeah, it's a win. And, but if we are able to get that far, we won't stop. We'll try to keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, even if we're not living here, we're still going to keep trying. Yeah. Or if he's not living here, it doesn't matter. Whoever lives here, we still have team members here. Yep. We're still going to try. Still going to support the local scene. Yes. Um, okay, so final thing that I had here that I wanted to talk about today really quickly there are aspiring players okay they are not amateurs they are professionals yeah they want to tour professionally I'm gonna walk that back because I've seen more and more let me tell you what it is GoFundMe yep people are creating GoFundMe's and saying Help me live my dream. Give me money so I can go on tour and do what I want to do. Some people say, yeah, I believe in you and I think you can do something. Here's some money. Some people say, this isn't what GoFundMe was for. You're not having an emergency. You're not right. having a, you know, whatever, a bad life experience. You want to live your dream and you just want other people to pay for it. Okay. That's literally what they're saying they're doing. So you can donate or you cannot donate, but you don't have to go after the person for doing it, right? I, I don't feel mm-hmm. that you have to. But and I want to say in the last two or three months, I've actually seen two aspiring amateur players really? who want to get better and want to travel and play some more of the tournaments that have amateur and pros mm-hmm. do fundraising. To try to, so to try to make up for that uh, um, money to to be able to do that. Really? So I haven't seen that. I haven't they seen are, I assume, at the precipice of going pro. Yeah. So that's why they want to do it. I didn't look at their ratings. I just thought, good for you. I hope somebody helps you. Maybe some sponsorships or something can do that for yeah, you. Yeah. Just go to your local sponsors. Like find local sponsors that are. Disc golf adjacent. Like, you know, if... Like, Jim. Yeah. He just got sponsored by Alien I Greens on the Hill. I can't think of the name of the company. We will put it here for him because we yeah. love Jim. He's here at Putting League He's here at Putting League all the He's time. He's great for the tournament. Canned food, dry. He does a lot. So yeah. we'll put a link. We'll make sure we put whoever it was. He make sure I can't, we get can't it I just can't think right. of the way the words go. You know what? Um, I don't know. But they sponsored him, and he, you know, he just said, "Hey, I want to play X number of tournaments. Can you give me X amount of money?" And they said, "Sure. We'll just put put our name on your back." And, and it happened. And so he got his tournaments for the year covered locally. You know, X however many tournaments he wanted to play, he told them, and they covered it for him. Um, is he local? Does he travel for it? I'm looking up his stuff. He right now. is a Southern Tier guy. He lives a little farther south. Well, no, I know that, but does he, like, Oh, he I don't travel know how far regional? he's going to travel. Like, so yeah. I talked to him today. He's planning to go to Masters Worlds this year. Nice. He's planning to, so he just needs to place X number of rounds. They take your highest rated rounds to make Masters Worlds. He is very active on socials. He is very active on socials. Very active, because I'm trying to get to the post where he put who it was, who but I'm not going to find it in time. Um, but if, okay. you're, if you're the local pro or the amateur... Then go out and Alien find Greens local spot. on I Hill. There you go. Alien yep. Greens on I Hill. Cam Kenhawk. There you go. So shout out to uh, Jim James Weiss. Shout out to you and Alien Greens on I Hill. Uh, there's actually a link here. We'll see if we can link them up. If there's something that they have going, we'll put that on there because that's just awesome. So, yeah, yeah, a great partnership for disc golf. And that's where you should be looking. You know, your local local skate shop, maybe. Like, you know, we have a skate. I just saw that, too. We're going to talk about this right now, right after this, because it's, it's, it definitely ties in. So um, Our yeah. local skate and snowboard shop, you know, is a big part of our disc golf scene, Fat Man. Yeah, that's where the putting. That's where that's, they, they yeah. host the putting league. Uh, Frank, he was one of the first people when I found out it was a local store to talk to. We thought we knew what we were talking about. And we're like, hey, Frank, 
Like, we're talking to each other, saying, oh, you need yeah. something that goes left or right? Like, oh, you need something with a fade of, like, four. Could be a 14-speed. We didn't care. We were buying them. Yeah. And Frank was like, eh, it's not going to do what you think it's going to do. Like, he could tell we were amateur. He didn't want to yeah. stop us from buying, but he was real honest with us. Yeah. Super chill dude, but yeah, Batman, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, just find, no, just find your local, your local scenes. Yeah. Like, find your local brewery, your local whatever, your local we dispensary. Had a, we had a local brewery pay, remember the, um, I think it was, was it Russo's tournament? They it's gave Trey up. Trey Wolford's tournament. No, 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 no. Trey, Trey worked at one, but. Yeah. No, there was another one. I want to say one of the hearths. There was another one that paid for the baskets. They, they matched money for oh, the baskets. Oh, I don't remember who put up the money for the baskets at Emory. Yeah, I right? don't remember. A brewery, though. Yeah. Was it the one in Hamburg or I the downtown one? I can't Because we also had the one downtown when they did the putting challenge at Larkin Square. Yes. That, that was, was cool also too. sponsored by yeah. one. So, yeah, local I businesses, them all. they're starting to get involved. I know Eric Fetterman. He's got one with with candles. Yes, Westcott Wicks. Westcott Wicks. Uh, I yeah, saw his candles. It's a local candle company. Local candle company. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. You never know who's the... Uh, Han, the pizzeria place. Oh, Mustachios? M- Mustachios. You know what I mean? Yeah, just, so, you know, if, just reach out to your local places. Yeah. yeah, make a relationship. Be a benefit to them. Yeah. And, like, you know, the benefit to this. I We get to use this space. Yeah. At WMY Gaming, so I'm gonna throw his logo on my back yeah. and represent, you know, show him off to wherever I end up playing this year. Yep, yeah. he's a really good guy. We've had uh, a really. He just put a shout out onto the West. Not a, he put a request out the West Gear Disc Golf page. Say, hey guys, I have all this space for disc golf. What do we do? And we got in touch with him, and this has been an involving relationship. He's an awesome dude. He's all in on trying to grow disc golf. We're all in on trying to work with him. We have this space here that we can utilize, but he's going to be more involved with tournaments. We're going to be more involved with helping him and trying to get the word out and get his stock up to where uh, we think it should be yeah. and where it can be. Um, I mean, there are so, so many people who play these games. You guys... Yeah, board I games. I think we switched one time, switched but you have all yeah, the board, board games, games the, the card games. Every, there are so many people who do both, um, especially like even the pros, when the touring, they play these games. Yeah. Um, they tie in so well, and I can't wait to finally get Jimmy on here because he does a lot of Star Wars stuff, and he posts on his socials yeah. some of the games that he plays. Jimmy Carmen. Carmen. Yeah. So tying that together and explaining more, I haven't played D&D since I was a, a very, very since in first high school. edition. Yeah, since high school. So, But I want to. I see everything happening. I just feel like it's, it's moved so far past me that I can't <laughs> keep up and understand when I see some of the people playing. I just feel like that, yeah. but I, but I want to get a I want to get a game in. I want to I want to go back to that and try to do that. But Jimmy is the expert, and it's grown. I mean, this guy's got so much stock here for games, yeah. for cards, for card game, rope, board game, all the dice you need. Yep, anything um, you could want. He's got it. There's so many, and there. I don't know which game. Do you know which game they play right here when we're putting? I think they're playing D and D in here. No, in here they they yeah they have the podcast. Oh, here, what they're playing magic of some they're sort. They're playing magic. Okay, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's magic. So I, every once in a while I'll, I'll get like a quick break and I'll just be listening, and I'm like, God, I wish I could play that, but I don't understand what they're saying. I oh, wish anymore. I could justify spending the money on card games because man, it's fun to collect cards. Is it real? Wait, playing the card games? You got to buy is, your deck. You got to build your deck. You got to buy cards for your deck. Is it? That easy where you can single out like the expensive, yeah, high hitter. Like I'm sorry, lack of time. I apologize, guys, but there's some hard hitters. There's some, you know, extra cards that that are obviously gonna bomb the other ones. Do whatever they need to do. Are those? Because in my in my experience from being old, you got a pack of cards, and you just had to get lucky. Yeah, that's what it was still. But, so, but then is there a world out, of trading that they can buy and sell? Yeah, like Jimmy's got individual cards up for sale. You can buy cards to put in your deck. So, wow. So you can really stack and buy. You're not buying these boxes. Or you can just look for the card yeah. you need to make. And you go online, you, you buy them, you buy them from wow. here. So I guess, yeah. Well, you know what? Start winning in MPO especially, and you can afford some card games. Cards. <laughs> I'll just stick to, well, I mean, I do play Pokemon trading card game online in my downtime every, every now and then. 
I so there's I no physical cards Pokemon with it. Pokemon Go once when it came out. Pokemon Go is fun. My, shout out to my mom. She still plays Pokemon Go every day. Yeah. Yep. That's since awesome. every day since it came out, she's played That's it. That's awesome. I did it for a little while, then I did it with the kids, and then it kind of just fell yep. off. I wasn't. I think I caught myself sitting in a shopping plaza or something looking for one. I was like, I guess this isn't a good idea anymore because I just look like a creeper. Like I put this game away, stop playing it. But yeah, uh, shout out to Jimmy and everything he's doing here, and you never know, he might, he might. Uh, he might help with the growth, and he might help with some sponsorships. Speaking of which, we're going to give a shout-out, okay? Yeah. This kid is super talented, okay? Landon Mortensen. Shout-out to you, Landon. Last year, you guys talked about this. Um, when, uh, what's his name? Greg came Barsby. Up, Barsby came over to visit. He spent some time with us. You were with him. Because you were following Landon and talking with Landon. And Landon was on a card with Barsby at Vegas Landon last year. Landon was on a card with Barsby. And uh, I had a conversation with Barsby because we were talking about possibly sponsoring Landon. Um, and we shared the same concerns and the same uh, pros, like pros and cons for, like, dead on with Barsby. And we've had talks with Landon now for a couple of years. And he finally landed that Millennium Sponsorship. So, huge shout out to Landon for never giving up. Yeah. And grinding. Uh, I just talked to him not that long ago, maybe two weeks ago, I think. I, yeah. I messaged you about him. Yeah. Um, he is a talented kid. He fits the mold of what you see now. I think he's, yeah. I think he's two years out of high school now, so he's like nineteen or yeah. twenty. Fits the mold of everybody else you see slinging out there. The tall, lanky yeah, tall, kids. lanky, yeah. string bean, but he um, throws a mile. Man, I, it was, I was actually happy. So we met him through Nate. Yep. And the first time I met him, you were not there. I took Alicia and Justin to meet the kid. And I could not tell you how happy I was to watch somebody throw past Justin. Justin was always like the senior in high school looking down on the freshman like, you can't do what I do. It was just like so annoying because the kid, Justin, is so good. He was on tour. He's a great player. But we came to see, meet this kid, and he had a busted ankle that was purple Yeah. on his plant foot, his right he's, foot. Landon, you're always nursing a busted ankle, dude. <laughs> he's, he's, Every, he's I met you one broke. time, and you still had a busted <laughs> ankle. Yeah, so he's nursing that, but the first time I see him just walk up and rip one that goes noticeably further than Justin, I said, holy shit, this kid can bomb. He throws. Good player, great player, and it's just nice to see someone, like, Kind of real time, like uh, I don't know, within the last hour he yeah, posted he that. Yeah, posted that within the within the hour of us recording this. Really awesome, and I'm I'm so glad it's working out for him, and I hope there's much more to come. I mean, he's running tournaments. Yeah, I've seen that. If you're in the, I don't know what part of Oregon he's from. If somehow this podcast finds you and you're in the Oregon area, who is check it? out my boys' tournaments. Who is it at LVC that's from Oregon? He was on the card, one of the lead cards. LVC from Oregon, Scott Withers. He's worked with Scott Withers. Yes. Scott Withers has Scott worked, Withers has with, worked him with Landon. Yeah, to try to tame the wild side of this kid, um, and apparently it's working. Uh, so Barsby is the team manager for Millennium. Barsby is the team manager or captain or captain? something. One of, one of those two. I don't exactly know. He's one of them, uh, and he recognized that talent early on, and it worked. Yeah. So kudos, shout out to Landon. I can't wait to support you, kid. I hope you get a disc, a touring disc, or something like that. Yeah, I would love to have you your first tour series uh, disc. Talk to us, and we'll help you. Um, we'll get you a design or something. Uh, especially knowing that Barsby loves our in-house artist, Sully Sullivan. Yeah. Um, man, that just that, that made my day right there. We're talking about GoFundMes and people grinding, and then boom, like right here, as we were talking about it, the kid is doing what he can. And I hope this affords him the ability to come east. I know he was struggling with being able to come east because he's from Oregon. Yeah, Austin. it's far. Um, he's not a touring pro. He's an MPO player. He's, he's, he's good. So whatever we got to do to help this kid make some connections and give him a couch to crash or something like that so yeah. he can come east, you know, let's try to do that. So we'll be in touch with you, Landon. Maybe we get you over here for Worlds or for yeah. Rochester. Rochester Actually, or something. Actually, it's the AFDO. AFDO, American Flying Disc Open. So apparently that's what it was originally. Yep. So they went back, back to, to it for the for 50th. For the 50th, yep. And I saw the car they gave away at that yeah. one. 
Do you remember what car it was? Mm, I saw the, the about picture of it today. Literally, hold on. I can I can definitely pull it up. Like a Gremlin or a Daytona, like a, a little a Datsun. A Datsun. Okay, Datsun. Datsun. I don't know. I whatever it's it was. Older than me. They gave away a car. Yeah. Like we're talking about. Hey, look, guys. We made it to the point where you got seventy five hundred for a win. You got fifty five hundred yeah. for a win. I'm guessing that nineteen seventy four. That's the year of the car. Of no, in the 1974, win? they gave away a car for disc golf. I'm, I'm asking, is like, did they say was it was a brand year. new car? I have to assume it's a brand yeah. new car. Yeah? So, I don't know if you can account for the price of inflation at all, but it's pretty I'm sick. guessing it was a little bit more in value than 7500 yeah, that we have today. Yeah, for a today, car. Right? So, it started out with, let's go big. Somebody saw an opportunity here in Rochester. They went big, and then they kind of fell off for a little while. And now we're heading back there. So, you know, Paul, if you want to throw a tournament, put your McLaren up for winning, I don't know. That would be a pretty cool idea. But, yeah, let's try to get this kid some help and try to get him over to the East Coast. Yeah. Um, and uh, maybe Nate would be down to help too. That's a good point. I think that's about our time for the day. Yeah. We um, covered a lot of topics. We did. And hopefully we have uh, Jimmy Carmen. Up next yes, coming week. up soon. If we don't, we do have another person, another, um, I don't want to say person, but we'll see. We have some, we have some things in the line. It's going to help. It's for the amateurs, as always. So, yep. Make sure you guys click the like, click the subscribe. Oh, I'm going to do pictures next week when we come. We're going to have a couple of pictures of the giveaway. So, when we hit 456 subscribers, we're going to give away a four times, a five time, and a six time. Paul Macbeth, buzz. They're all going to be buzzes. So keep an eye out for that. I'll at least have a picture. Maybe we'll do them one at a time. One, two, three. We'll, we'll do something like that. Um, try to spread it out. Try to keep it out there. We're still working on the details, but you're going to have to like. You're going to have to subscribe. You're going to have to drop some names, tag some friends. But yeah. We're talking about a four time, a five time, and a six time. They're all new. One of them has died. Obviously, I'm dying to disc golf, but they're all new. So... Keep an eye out for that coming out soon. All right? Yeah. Like, subscribe, right on. hit them all. Hit the details. We like your feedback. Keep it going. We'll see you guys next week.